Hello everyone. Welcome back to machine learning sessions. In today's session, let us learn how to draw this bar graph. So here you can see a vertical bar graph, horizontal and a bar graph with different colors and different labels. Okay, let us learn how to do this bar graph. So first let us see what is a bar graph. We all are aware a bar graph is positioned at X with the given alignments and their dimensions are given by the height and width. So the height and width of the bar and the vertical baseline is always the bottom one. So if you see the syntax of it, here the name of the method is matplotlib.pyplot.bar. Since it is a bar graph, the name of the method is bar and the arguments of it are x, height, width, bottom, align, data, and quarks. Okay. So as usual, similar to the earlier methods what we have discussed, so here x can be a floating point value or it could be an array of values. So this will give us the x coordinates of the bars. Okay. So x coordinate is the baseline. Always the vertical baseline is the x coordinate, right? So now the height. So this is this also could be a floating point value or it could be an array. And this tells us the height of the bars, whereas the width will tell us what should be the width of the bar. By default, it will take a value of 0 0.8 if you are not specifying. If you want to alter this width, you have to give the value and then the bottom value. Okay, so this also can be a floating point value or it could be an array value. And they, these are the y coordinates. Okay, the y coordinates of the bottom slides of the bars. By default, the value starts with 0. And the alignment. So, where your bars should be aligned, either at the center or at the edge, two options can be given. Okay, so if you are giving the center, center it will on the base, it will position the bar on the center of the x. If you are giving edge, it will align to the left. If you are, want to align it to the right also, it is possible. But here what you should do is, you should give the width as a negative value and again, align option should be edge. We will be working with all this shortly. And we have other parameters as well. Data, which is an indexable object and it is an optional one. And quarks, the rectangle properties, which we discussed earlier. And we have various other parameters which which also we have used earlier. So those are color, edge color, then line width and tick label and finally the label. So here one thing I would like to mention about this tick label. So here if you have a list of strings or a string, if you want to display this one, you by default it will be none and whatever values we supply for the x and y so that will be taken as the label value but if you want to give some other value other than that so we will be giving this label otherwise you can simply omit these values now let us work out with all this so as usual let me take my google collab and here so let us take the library which helps us to do this Let's import matplotlib. In that, we are taking the module pyplot. And to this, we are passing an alias name. Instead of every time giving as matplotlib.pyplot, we are just alias giving it an alias name, plt. Okay. So now, we have to specify what is the x value and what are, what are the label values that we need. So we should tell always the height and x value, the base bottom line. So let us specify these values. So these are my x values and here I'm specifying the height also. By default, the height will start with zero, right? So these are the height values that I have given. So now let us call our method name of our method is plt.bar. First, let us take the simple version as I'm doing all the time, x comma values. So here, if you want, you can replace this with a height 
as well. Okay, so there, are, there is no requirement that since in the method there is x and uh, height, we should use the same names. It is not like that, but you should pass the arguments in that order. That's all. And here, let me specify, I'm not giving the width. By default, it will take 0 0.8. Only color let us specify. Let us specify the color as green. And let's call the show me that. To display the graph on the screen. It's taking a little time to start the session. So here you can see this is our bar graph. So here the values that we have given max value is 7. So by default it is starting with 0. So see in mathematics also we are aware bar graph always starts with a 0 value, right? So it is starting with 0 and ending with the highest value that is 7. And here you can see the x labels, the names on the x axis. So the values that we have given are A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So it is giving us a, B, C, D. And by default, it is taking a width of 0 0.8. Okay. So, here this is a vertical one. If you want to plot a horizontal bar graph, that is also possible. Let us see how to do that. I will take the help of the same code and just copy it. And here, I will just add a H, bar H. So, this tells a horizontal bar. Let us see the output of this. So here you can see we got our horizontal bar. Okay. So these are our actual X values, which is our bottom line. And these are the values or the heights that we have specified. Okay. So if you want here, you can give height as well. You can rename it in order to avoid confusion in the beginning. Okay, so these are our heights of the bars and these are the names or the labels of our bars. That, yes. So now, always why we will be using a bar chart is for comparisons. Suppose if you want the comparison of one class with the other. Okay, so in that case, how to handle, let us see. So in this case, uh, let me take the one. Okay, so... Already I have imported in the beginning. I need not do it again, but still I will do import. Add plot with dot by plot. As PLT. Here you can see it is giving us a shorthand also. It is helping us. That's the beauty of this polar. You need not remember the syntax exactly. It will help you. So now let me give the values as Suppose in an exam, I want to see how many students have scored less than 14 and how many are in the range of 14 to 19. Let us assume here the maximum marks are 25. So how many have scored greater than 25? So this is what I want to check. And I'm giving my X1 values. So here I am working with two classes. So in the two classes, how many are falling in the range of less than 14? How many are falling in the range of 14 to 19? And how many are falling in the range of greater than 19? Sorry, not 25. Greater than 19. So let us give X2 as well. Here we will be plotting two different bar graphs to indicate two different classes, but that plotting will be done in a single graph. Let us see how to do that.
So now I should also know what are these values. So you can specify the labels. Okay. And let's call our plot method here. So let us call plt dot part. And to this, let us apply our values. Instead of giving it as x1, I will give it as class 1. This x2, I will label it as class 2. Class 1. And here, let us specify the width. Okay, so here I'm specifying the width as 0 0.3. And if you want to specify the color, that also you can give. Here I want to label my class. Okay, so let me label it as let let me give the labeling as label one and uh, let me give the color of this as red. And let us specify the alignment. Since I am comparing two classes, so I want to align one to the right and one to the left. Okay. So how can I make it alignment to the left? By default, the alignment is center. So if I say edge, it will be aligned to the left, right? So I'm aligning it to the edge. And now I just want to give a border line to my bar graph as well. So what should I specify? I should give edge color. So this we already have used it. I'm using the edge color as blue. And if you want to specify the width of this edge color, so then what argument we should use? It is line width. Here, I'll, I would like to give the line width as two. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah, I think we are done with, if we are left with the journey, we'll see and we'll add values we have given, then width. We have given alignment. Everything we have done. I'll just copy this for the next class as well, and we will make the changes. So now this time it is class two. Let me slightly change the width, zero point two, and actually I want it to be right. Okay, so let me give a negative sign here at the width, and label is class two. This time, let me give the color yellow. Alignment is again edge itself. So here you can see, don't get confused. Here also alignment is edge only, but you can see the width is a positive value. Here also alignment is edge only, but the width is a negative value so that you will get the bar towards the right. And here, let me change the edge color. Okay. I'll give green, yellow on top of it, green, just for visibility. So, and uh, let me give, let me show you the change in the line width also. Okay. So now, let us name our x and y axis. Plt dot x label and y label. Let us specify. So, what is our x label? What does it tell? X label shows us the ranges, how many students are falling in that particular range. Then similarly, the Y label, the Y label is indicating us the number of students, how many number of students are falling in that particular range. And let us name our uh, graph as well using plt.title. So this is not new to us. We already used it, right? Let's name it as bar graph. And if you want to also give a labeling of which class, which color shows you which class inside your Inside your bar graph itself, let us use the legend. And finally, let's show the method. 
plt dot show is to display our graph on the screen. Let's run this. It is giving us some error. Okay. Always getting error is very good. We will have more of the learning. Actually, I have given a set, but I, I should give an array. We want to learn more, we should get more errors. Here we got our beautiful bar graph. Okay. So yellow I have given towards the left. And red I have given. Let, let us see the color. Okay. So yellow towards the right. And one towards the right and one towards the left. So, okay. okay. So width is 0 0.2 yellow. So you can see the change in the width also. And also... The line with the edge color, you can see one is with the blue and another one is with the green and the line width. So this line width is this edge boundary. So how much width you want for this edge? So that is this line width. So on top of red, we have given edge color blue. Okay. And the width of this is two. On top of yellow, we have given the edge color green. The width of this edge is Three. Okay, so by changing these parameters, you can get your required output and you can see the legend as well. So class one is indicated in red with this blue color boundary. Class two is indicated with green, yellow with green color boundary. And you can see our X and Y axis also. So here, this is X axis specifying as the ranges. And y-axis is giving us the number of students and you can see the title as well. Okay, so hope you under you enjoyed the session. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. We'll see you in the next session. Thank you. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe.